I think most of us have a memory of staying up a bit too late just channel surfing, only to stumble upon the strangest movie or show that you'd ever seen. Maybe it was a movie about an island of giant Komodo dragons, or an odd version of The Fly where the guy gets turned into a mosquito. Or maybe a college drama movie where killer babes turn out to be from space and as they mate they freeze their unexpecting partners. Chances are, these fever dream-like memories were caused by a sci-fi original movie. There's something about these sci-fi originals that tickles the brain and wedges a place inside that just refuses to be forgotten. Most of the time, the movies have absurd plots with terrible acting and even worse graphics, and yet so many of them have perfected the ideology that something can be so bad, it becomes great. I can't tell you how many times I've sat down to find a good movie, but nothing fits the mood. So instead, we flip on a random sci-fi original and let the terrible B-horror movie take us on an adventure that we just wouldn't get anywhere else. And this method is exactly where I found Alien Apocalypse. Now, watching some behind-the-scenes stuff, it's strange how much work was actually put into this film. This was one of two films that was pitched to the sci-fi channel by director Josh Becker and the chin himself, Groovy Bruce Campbell. It's obviously got a tiny budget and a concept that wasn't meant to be taken seriously, but they made some pretty fantastic looking practical effects. Although, they don't look great in the actual movie, it's just good looking and behind the scenes, somehow. But they did write a script that allowed for Bruce Campbell to harness his inner army of darkness and just riff and goof around while trying to find a way to kill aliens and save the human race. It's not a good movie. But it is incredibly entertaining, and I think it's a perfect example of a peak sci-fi original movie. So, don't forget to like and subscribe, and a huge thanks to my YouTube members. I love you all very much. Now, sit back, and let's watch 2005's Alien Apocalypse. The movie has one of the strongest openings of all time because it emulates the good book. In the beginning, there was the heavens and the earth, and it was green. That's right. We're starting off with the Bible. The narrator does end up losing the plot a little bit as he starts to go off on how much he loves trees. Trees of every sort and variety. Enormous Douglas firs. Mighty oaks giant redwoods and fragrant pines. But, uh-oh, the Earth's beginning and the super rad trees are all a thing of the past now because the Earth was invaded by aliens known as mites. Humanity was enslaved by the mites, and while they aren't social distancing, everyone is wearing a face mask, so while they may not be free, they do at least have something to cover their coughs. A fiery something crashes from space and we see four astronauts returning to Earth after completing some vague mission and spending 40 years in cryosleep. Leading the astronauts is the joke-cracking man with the chiseled chin named Dr. Ivan, and his second in command is named Kelly. The other two are Ada and Chuck, and Ada has a little bit of a limp while Chuck just has a good head on his shoulders. Trust me, that's gonna make a lot of sense in not very long. The astronauts hobble towards the nearest city, only to find Portland completely decimated. Ow! What'd you do that for? I didn't do anything. The group duck down as a bunch of slavers walk by, but while they're hiding, they get snuck up on by three more slavers. One man with a totally real beard gets mad when the astronauts try to speak. Dude, I don't know where you're from with your funny clothes, but you don't never talk to us! Never! With that, the astronauts are captured and masked, but Ada moves too slow for the slavers, so... As they're being taken to camp, 
We see a few glimpses of the mites, and we also see a slave lumber mill with an alien artifact glowing on some kind of building. The three new slaves are told to put wood from one pile onto another pile, and they stop for literally two seconds, but this bald overseer guy gets all mad at them because if they start working, then he'll get in trouble, and he doesn't want that. Before they can even get back to work, another slaver grabs all three of them and he takes them to that strange building that we saw a few minutes ago. When they get inside, they're brought face to face with a mite and... and somehow it speaks perfect English. Who am I? I am the leader. The leader of this district. Leader? Chuck shows that he's the smart one and that he's super duper observant. You're not even human. No. Chuck keeps trying to ask questions. But the mites don't like that he's speaking out of turn, so... That is our favorite delicacy next to wood. Yeah, so Chuck is dead. And we learn that the aliens love to eat heads, but even more so they love eating wood. And that's why they invaded Earth, because we have an abundance of tasty, tasty wood. Kelly and Ivan try to rationalize with the human guards, but that doesn't go well. They're tossed into a hole with the other slaves, and they meet this exposition specialist named Jeff. My name is Jeff. Jeff remembers the probe mission that the astronauts went on, and he tells them that the invasion happened about 20 years ago, and the aliens invaded Earth to export wood to their home planet. He also mentions that slaves get their fingers cut off if they try to escape, and it's obvious that Jeff has tried to escape a few times, but has had no success. Yeah, well, if you lose any more, you're going to be scratching your ass with a wooden spoon. When I lose them. We also learn <laughs> that Jeff is only 35 years old. Oh, I guess I'm just 35 now. Very few make it to my age. Hard work under the mites. <laughs> It ages you. It ages you really fast and really poorly. <laughs> oh, man. So the astronauts ask what keeps them all going, but Jeff doesn't really have an answer. When they bring up hope, another guy named Alex speaks up. The president lives. The president. So there have been rumors circulating about the president since the invasion happened, but Jeff thinks that there's no truth behind them at all because it's been 20 years. Republicans. Sheesh. With no better alternative, Ivan and Kelly pick up wooden spoons and they decide to Shawshank their way out of the hole. They spend a few days digging and working and stealing gloves from a dead guy and then digging more and fighting for food. And then one day, Kelly puts the moves on Ivan. But then one day, Kelly gets caught by the guards and she's about to get the old Ramsey Bolton treatment. So Bruce snaps and decides to fight to save his lady. They take out the guards pretty easily, but when they try to rally the other slaves, only that Alex guy that we saw earlier agrees to join them. They get caught by an alien, but who knew their weakness is being stabbed and hit until they die. On their way out, Kelly throws her weapon and just nails this dude in the head. <laughs> The trio then run out of the camp, and for some reason, they decide to split up. But Kelly goes one way, and both Alex and Ivan go the other. So, it's not really much of a split up, if you ask me. They're all pursued by guards on horses, and Kelly takes a couple of them out, but they end up stopping her <laughs> by tossing a noob tube onto their gun and nearly blasting her into smithereens. Alex and Ivan are able to escape by jumping into some water, and I don't I don't know if this is supposed to be like part of the ocean or a river or something. But next we see they're very far from the camp in a different looking forest. A voice calls to them from the trees, and we meet Busy. Why are you wearing such funny clothes? He's from outer space. Are you an alien? Do I look like an alien? No. So, Busy takes them to her village, and that's 
all she does in this movie. Like, don't get me wrong, she stays as part of Bruce's fellowship, but other than the odd line here or there, she doesn't do a single thing. In the village, they meet with the leader named Isaac, and he says that he saw Kelly get captured somehow, even though they're miles and miles away. He saw it. He saw it. Don't question him. But while he's talking, Ivan notices that Isaac has a bad back, so he decides to show off his doctoring skills to fix the guy's spine. Out. Thank you. No problem. You'll get my bill. Of course... Ivan wants to find a way to save Kelly, but the people in the village are too afraid to fight, and they're all waiting for President Dembski to rally his troops and come to their aid. The president lives. I've spoken with a guy who, who knew someone, who saw him. He lives. The president lives. president lives. Ivan decides that he's going to go to the mountains and find the president himself, and then Alex and Busy both choose to go with him. I think he'll lead you to your doom. We'll let you know when we get back. This movie is full of random running gags. I'm pretty sure none of them were scripted, and it was all just Bruce Campbell having fun in the shoots. One of them is, since doctors no longer exist, he wants to be known far and wide as the Great Healer. Excluding MDs, of course, and I'll be known as the Great Healer. <laughs> Despite this, we don't see him doing much doctoring at all. He just does chiropractic work here and there, and he talks about how he's a DO and not an MD, so he's more of a doctor of the people. Another gag is the age thing, like Jeff that we saw earlier. Each time there's an old person, Ivan's always like, I'm probably twice your age, so shut up, young old man. It, it's so dumb. I cut off, old man. Look, I, I'm probably twice your age. And another big one is that no one knows what a handshake is, so... Bruce is just putting his hand out and getting more and more frustrated when no one shakes it. There's just stupid little things like this that made me love this movie. It tries to out-silly itself constantly, and with each dumb thing, I end up loving it a little bit more. So back in the lumber mill, Kelly gets thrown back into the slave hole, and we see a few seconds of an alien funeral, and it turns out that killing an alien is a huge deal. No one has ever killed one of the mites before. No one's ever killed one of them before. Like, the alien died in one regular powered stab. You're telling me no one ever accidentally, like, dropped a log on the alien's foot and saw it bleed? Uh, I mean, maybe they're all just brainwashed at this point and believe the aliens are immortal. But they're like, no one has ever killed an alien before. It's a huge deal. Oh, man. Now, Ivan, Busy, and Alex journey through the woods to find the president. They come across a guy that's been shot. So, I guess Ivan does do a little bit of doctoring because he cuts the bullet out and saves this guy's life. But he doesn't stitch up the wound, and his operating is just him stabbing and twisting a big knife. He's, he's a really great healer. <laughs> anyway, this guy's name is Tyler, and he'll be joining the group. Let's go. A few minutes after Tyler, they meet another guy that they see fishing, and by fishing, I mean he's absolutely decimating the fish population. Each flick of his rod is another fish on the shore. It's incredible. The man turns to shoot, but he sees the pretty girl, so he decides not to kill anybody. Ivan tells him about their plan to go and find the president, and the man... Likes how Ivan talks. All right. I'm with you. I like the way you talk. So, he decides to also join the group. And his name is Bob. The group hears some bounty hunters on a nearby path, and Ivan shoots one of them with an arrow. When they come out of the bushes, suddenly Ivan's group has grown a ton. There's like five new people here out of the blue. We have no idea where they came from or when they joined the group, but they're here now. So Ivan offers to save the slaver's life if he agrees to leave the aliens and join the side of humanity. They do a walking shot that looks a lot like Fellowship of the Ring.
Finally, they can see a structure on a mountaintop that they assume the president is hiding in. But, uh-oh, they get shot at by this hobbling little totally not Gollum crouchy man. But Ivan isn't scared. You're not going to shoot me. I'm not, huh? How do you know? I just know. Ain't you just a little scared? Not even a little. I'm Ivan. I forgot to mention it earlier, but another bit that they always do is whenever someone even mentions the president, the entire group comes to life and chants, the president lives. So when Ivan tells the crouchy, not Gollum man that they're going to find the president, the, the president, president lives. lives, the president lives. Hey, hey, hey. Well, it turns out that the crouch guy knows the president and he agrees to take the group to the bunker. They all enter into a bunker full of senators and apparently even President Dembski, but they're all ragged looking and clearly not doing well. Mr. President, this disgusting creature has brought us outsiders. Ivan talks with the president, but he has no fighting force whatsoever or even an ability to face the aliens. So he's just a beaten old man who doesn't believe the aliens can be killed. So Ivan decides to take things into his own hands. Mr. President, someone's got to lead this rebellion, and if it's not going to be you, then it might as well be me. Back at the lumber mill, one slave tries to make a run for it, but it only leads to the classic Chuck treatment. <laughs> and that's all for that scene. It's, it's just a quick cut to no more Headville, and then right back to Bruce and the Gooses. The crouchy guy leads them out of the forest and he's about to leave, but Ivan tells him to hold on for a bit. Also, we learn for the first time that this guy's name is Bill. Ivan wants to help Bill's back, so he lays him down and then pop, pop, crunch, crack. Gone. <sighs> Just like that, Bill is fully healed and now he'll be joining Ivan's squad too. The group make their way back to the village and tell them the news about the president. The president lives! The president does in fact live. The president lives! He does a quick speech about how just because the president isn't fighting, that doesn't mean that hope is lost, but it doesn't work at all. This is stupid. There's not enough of us to do anything. I'm going fishing. Ivan says that he's going to fight anyway, and he and the group walk away from the village. In the night, Ivan, I guess, prays to Kelly? And then the slaver guy that they saved earlier invades Busy's no-no square. But Alex saves her before Ivan shows up and shoots him. Hey, scumbag, you forgot something. What? <laughs> you said you're a doctor. You're supposed to heal people. I am. Your stupidity is terminal. And now you're cured. <sighs> the next morning, the battle for Helm's Deep lumber mill begins. The Ivan squad sneaks up and takes out the lookouts and a bunch of other human guards. Then, they charge in and bash down the super sturdy chain link fence. The aliens start shooting back and their guns do a lot of damage, but their home is made of wood? So the humans shoot some flaming arrows and force them out. A bunch of aliens come out all blasting away, so the humans are forced to retreat. But that was just a ploy, because they unveil an arrow turret that just shreds the aliens. And then they charge in again. <laughs> Finally, Ivan and Kelly reunite with a loving smooch, and... All the slaves see that humans can fight and there is hope, so they take off their masks and turn against the remaining human guards. Things are all triumphant and going well until they hear a rumbling in the distance <laughs> and a single alien tank rolls up and busts down the gate. Humans, give up immediately. Do not attempt resistance. You are defeated. You like wood so much? Eat this! Yeah, so the reinforcements get killed in like two seconds. But the tank then launches missiles that start exploding things and humans are dying and there's fire everywhere and it's chaos. And when it stops firing, all of the humans are knocked down and coughing. And then 
even more reinforcements come out of the tank. It's it's a freaking reinforcement reinforcement. This thing is a clown car tank. The aliens line up all the humans and ask for the human leader. I'm the leader, thank you very much. No, I'm the leader. No, I'm the leader. No, it's me. <laughs> no, I've always been the leader here. I'm the leader. No, it's me. No, actually, I'm the leader. Despite this Spartacus moment, the alien already knows that Ivan is the leader, so he just orders his mites to execute him on the spot. Humans will rise up against your tyranny and kill every last one of you slimy bugs. I do not think so, human. But right at the last moment, arrows fly in, and the people of Busy's village, and the president, and all of the senators show up, and they save the day. And Ivan also does this, which is awesome. <laughs> this fight is... It's super epic, with arrows and sword slashes and Molotovs that blow up the tank in one explosion. And then this dude gets his head bit off, but then Kelly does a revenge and chops that alien's head off. It's, like I said, it's super epic. In the end, Ivan is surrounded by like 40 dead aliens and the president comes up to him and says that Ivan was able to convince him to fight again for his people. But Ivan isn't satisfied quite yet. The battle isn't over until we've won. Until every last alien is dead. Get it? Got it. Good. We then get some happy music and narration of how the group is going through all of the sawmills and saving all of the captured humans and Ivan is now not known as the Great Healer, but instead the Great Exterminator. And on that happy note, the movie ends. So, there you go. A peak sci-fi original movie. It's got the formula down with terrible graphics, bad acting, and a nonsense storyline. And yet it's so freaking fun and entertaining that I can't help but love it. I don't know how to rate a movie like this, because obviously it's not good, but at the same time I don't feel right giving it like a 3 or a 4. So instead, I'm just gonna say it's great, and it's a sci-fi original movie, and it's a 10 out of 10, and it's a 10 out of 10, <laughs> it's the perfect movie! Ah! <laughs> ah, yeah, but... What do you guys think? Have you seen Alien Apocalypse? Was this one of those random movies that haunted your childhood memories? Or is this your first introduction to it? Also, let me know your favorite sci-fi original movie down in the comments, and I'll definitely give them a watch because, like I said, this is kind of one of my little guilty pleasures every once in a while. Sometimes these are the only kind of movies that really hit. But that's it. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. It really does help with that YouTube algorithm a lot more than you might expect. So thank you guys so, so much, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.